Hi, I'm Judy from Judykins. This morning I woke up to the sound of these cute little birds singing in my yard and it got me thinking about making something tweet. My friends Ann and Sue showed me these great cards that they made and it all started out with unmounted stamps. But the first thing I need to do is mount them so I could stamp them. The guys over at Rubber Stamping Concepts have this great starter set for mounting unmounted stamps. You get acrylic handles, a pair of rubber mounting scissors, and the most important thing is this cushion. So let me show you how to mount your stamps. This foam is called static cling foam, and the reason why is because one side of it is not sticky, it's actually very slick. And if you're using an acrylic block like this, you notice that the foam sticks to the acrylic block, yet you can peel this off very easily. The other side of the foam is really sticky, and this is the side you're gonna mount your stamp to. You just peel off the backing, lay your stamp onto the sticky side, and then you're going to trim it with the scissors that came with the kit. The nice thing about these scissors is it cuts through both the rubber and the cushion at the same time. I've already mounted some of my rubber dies here, so I'm going to take my first stamp here. This is a background image from my friend Mary Kay over at Stamp Camp, and she has these beautiful backgrounds that are drawn with a lot of detail, yet it stamps out really, really nice. And you just mount it onto the acrylic block with the non-sticky side of the foam here. Now this block is a little bit big and it's kind of hard for me to hang on to. In the kit, you get this suction cupped handle here that I could just place on the back of the acrylic block. And then that's a great handle for me to hang on to when I want to stamp my image. So I have my note card here and using the ochre ink pad, I just ink up the stamp and with this little handle, the suction cupped handle here, it helps me place my stamp over my card. And then when I push down to get the impression, I push on the back or the acrylic part of the handle to get a nice even pressure when I'm stamping. So there I have the great stamped image here of my background. Then to store my stamp, I just wipe off the excess ink. And then in my little kit here, I just peel off that rubber die, place it on this sturdy plastic sheet. And then the next image is the sweet little flowers from Stamp Camp. And I'm going to stamp that with brown ink over the top of the soft tropical vines that I have on this card. So again, using the handle, I position that over my first stamped image and just press right in the center and when I pull that up I have two layers of different patterns and different colors. I stamped the third background which was the text in oriental blue and now I'm going to stamp the bird on this postcard. Now I've already mounted the wing here on this acrylic block. I'm going to stamp the wing first and then I'm going to mask it with a little eclipse tape. And this way, when I stamp the body of the bird, it will look really natural. Just take off the wing here, and I'm going to store it back on this plastic sheet. And here is my little bird now. And I'm using permanent ink here because I'm going to be watercoloring over the top of the bird in just a little bit. So here I'm going to stamp my bird. And when I peel off the mask, the wing is sitting in the right position. I'm going to put my mask away, and I'll put this rubber die away. And now, let's stamp the crown. And the nice thing about these acrylic blocks is you could see through them, so you can actually stamp the image pretty accurately. This bird set comes with legs and eyes, which makes this so much easier to create my little bird. 
And finally, let's stamp the eye in here. Now I know you're thinking I'm a little crazy here because I've got this outline of a bird stamped on patterned paper. But don't leave me here because we're going to show you how I'm going to make this bird pop. I'm going to paint in my bird now with this set of pearlescent watercolors from Yasutomo. There's 21 colors here, which is a fabulous palette to choose a whole variety of different shades. I'm using a water brush from Yasutomo, and there's water in the barrel of the brush, which makes this very convenient for watercoloring. If I squeeze in the center here, then I can get a little water down to the tip, and that allows me to put water on the watercolor so I can start painting with it. So I'm picking up a little bit of copper from this copper palette here, and I'm going to paint that on the crown of the bird. And this hides some of the text and the pattern that I have in the background. To clean off the brush so that I can start with a new color, I just take a paper towel and just blot the excess color off, and now I can pick up another color. I'm going to use a mixture of gold and platinum watercolors, and then starting at the top of the wing, just pull some of that color to the side, to the tip of the wing, and then pick up just a little bit more paint, and work from the top of the head of the bird down to the tail. Now I'm watercoloring over dye-based ink, and when the blue mixes with this gold, I get a little bit of a green shading because dye-based inks with water tends to bleed a little bit, but this is an effect that I really, really like here. For this next step, I'm using Judykin's DG3. It's a water-soluble, glossy glaze that I'm going to apply right on top of my bird. It gives my bird a fuzzy kind of a background and color. Now I'm using the water brush to kind of spread that glaze around, but one of the things with the water brush is because there's water in the barrel, if I squeeze some of the water down to the tip, that's enough to flush all of that glaze out of the bristles, and now my brush is ready to use for more water coloring. Now this is my finished card. I just cropped it and mounted it onto my card, and now my card is finished. Sometimes you're in a little bit of a hurry, and to save a step, you can start out stamping on printed paper. I'm using this beautiful Foldham's origami paper from Yasutomo. This is the peony pattern, and I chose the lilac color. Now, traditionally with origami paper, the paper is a little bit thin, and because I'm going to be making a gift out of this, I want to mount my origami paper on a piece of cardstock. I chose a matching or coordinating color cardstock in this really pretty shimmery gold, and I stamped my birds on the origami paper. I've painted a little bit of the purple pearlescent watercolor over the top or the back of the bird and also on the wing. And finally, I've coated my bird with a little bit of the DG3. Now something fun you can do with the DG3 is add layers onto something that you've already glazed. I'm going to use this tiny tip here that's an extension of the applicator tip that I have on my bottle. I'm adding these little dots to the wing to add texture to it. So now that I've finished my bird, let me show you how I made a little package or a little card to hold my bird. I stamped the background of the card here, and then I added some more pearlescent paint to it. And then I punched out the holes with this Japanese screw punch. And then using a craft knife, I connected the dots here so that that allows for the pin part of the pin back. So you just take your bird and center that and just press lightly and now my bird is attached to the card. I also made some cute little earrings here and I punched a couple other holes and now I have this complete little jewelry set that I can give as a tweet little gift. Well, these birds are tweet too. I drew the legs in to make them really tall, and there's the king bird and the two little prince birds. And you noticed I didn't stamp the eye on that one just because I wanted them to have a little bit of a regal personality there. And on this card, you notice I left the wing off just to kind of show you that you don't have to use all the parts and pieces that are included in the set. 
I've added some paper cords for some added extra embellishment just to make the card look interesting. I'm so grateful to all the Anns and the Sues of the world that keep inspiring me with these great ideas. I'll see you next time. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to create this week's project, download the design guide featuring special make-it-your-own bonus tips.